to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, welcome in. Monday, October 14th, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, and a bear. I promise we're back in full force tomorrow, but no mic today. Dang, I just keep- Gang, we'll be back together. Hey, you're holding it down, though. ping-ponging uh, best friends. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to be your best friend. Today. Wait, is you're it my Monday. It- you're only my Monday best friend. Okay. I'm like, glad it's me. I was worried it was Jay Grizz. I was like- No, Jay Grizz- uh, Pretty distracted by the Bears' performance over the weekend. Oh man, you got to be hot and bothered if you're a Bears fan right now. I mean that that was a that was an awesome showing. Uh, it helps to play against the Jaguars who are imploding, but Caleb Williams looked. Th- you know what? This was like I don't remember the last time. Maybe, maybe never. I don't know where you had rookie quarterbacks all succeed at least for fantasy like they didn't necessarily win the games but drake may three touchdowns uh did bo, bo nicks nick, have an okay bo game? nicks had a great game 61 yeah. rushing yards um Jaden daniels obviously Jaden daniels and and the number one quarterback on the week is kayla williams all rookies so let's go the last three weeks bears 21 uh 24 points 36 35 points his passer rating um was outstanding again the last three weeks over 100 and he ran he ran for the second week in a row. That's yeah. That's so so valuable for not just for fantasy, which is really all I care about, but I think it unlocks. Like he he's got wheels. He needs to utilize that as a weapon. You know the way that Mahomes did when he was uh you know earlier in his career, he'd, he'd scramble a lot. It's very similar. Yeah, and it was still last resort stuff. It was uh, escapability in the pocket, eyes downfield, eyes downfield, eyes downfield. Okay, there's no one in front of me for 25 yards. We got lots to talk about, studs and duds, on the show today. A lot it, of duds, a lot of injuries. You know, yeah, the, the weekend was weird. Um, if you join me on Sunday Live, there were lots of decisions to be made. A lot of, you know, Michael Pittman, all of a sudden he's playing, and then Darius Slayton versus everybody under the sun because he had an opportunity to start. And Tyrone Tracy and all these... All these backup, but you know, Bucky Irving, all these backup options that were thrust into your lineups due to injuries, and then the games start, and there's more and more and more injuries, and they weren't the cool ones. No, they weren't like, oh, they had a good game, they, and yeah. then they're out. It was Marvin Harrison has two targets, no receptions, a concussion, he's gone. Uh, Chris Olave, one catch, one fumble. One fumble, negative one, and he's gone. Yeah, and uh, Jerome Ford gone early in the game. Yeah, Dallas if, Goddard, you know, beat Goose gone early in the game. Yeah, if you're going to be hurt, be a Nico. Catch a 72 right, yard bomb. Right, get hurt and on run, the touchdown. Run right out of the end zone into the locker room. Can we just let's just do the like NFL players? Let's just do the like. If you're going to get hurt, get a touchdown first. Get hurt on a touchdown. On the that's what I'm get saying. Hurt on a that's what I'm saying. On the Travis touchdown. Travis Etienne, you're going to pull your hamstring and become week to week. Do it on a touchdown. Do it on a touchdown, and I'll be okay. Yep. All right. All right. Wow, that was – I mean, we just that rattled like off really – we, we don't have a list no, in front of us. No. We just rattled off five guys that literally went out early in the games on one week. And then there were players that seemed like they were hurt, like Calvin Ridley or Dak Prescott. Well – They uh, played in the games, but they did they? Calvin didn't. I mean, that, that it's not – your tweet was right. It's not football. What's going on there in Tennessee is not football. I tweeted the eight – let me do this. Can I get – yeah targets targets the eight targets that he got from will levis a uh pop warner quarterback well here's here's this isn't you talking this is calvin ridley after that game was asked about his targets and his response the player himself said i got targets he said that to the reporter that's not me making a joke that's what he said he goes i got targets win He's like, oh, it's in the fourth, and then he and then he went and he and said, he goes, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe I should like be involved in the game plan before then, right? So Brian uh, Callahan in Tennessee is pulling his hair out. His life has shortened significantly due to being going from Joe Burrow, 
that level of competency and execution to whatever Will Levis is, the amalgamation of – He's a banana rama. He ate a banana with a banana peel on. <laughs> I mean, he ate a banana with a banana peel on, and that's why he, we call him banana rama. You can't do that if you're a quarterback. Banana rama! You See, that, do, even, that, even that drops too positive. You could do that as a D lineman. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, as a D-lineman, eat your banana peels. There are but certain positions that can eat a banana with a banana peel on. You can't do that at quarterback. you got to have your head on straight. And, I mean, uh, look, I've been reminded that he was a my guy. I don't know if you knew that he was. Did not you know that? Will Levis. <laughs> no, not Will Levis, Calvin but Calvin Ridley. Ridley. Yes. I've been reminded. Oh, have you? Um, You know, this, the saving uh, – it was a bet on Will Levis being competent. It was a bet on Brian Callahan – executing his offense we say this every offseason that you know when a new coach and offensive system comes into a place we always project or we like to project Positivity. how it goes well yeah and what the path to going well is and to me if it went well for brian callahan in tennessee it only goes well utilizing calvin ridley in this offense it has not gone well the nice thing is is if you want to drop him you can drop him i personally i would not play him i would put him on the bench you can drop him. That's fine. He was a seventh round pick on sleeper. He should not be the single. Yeah, he hasn't ruined detriment your, to your team. Your team, and hopefully you drafted you know uh, Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors and other players that are still healthy and playing well. And I do think that you know Calvin Ridley will get some things figured out there, and he he's probably somebody you should bench right now. Yeah, I mean, but it, man, it was frustrating. I it, t here's the TLDR on the eight targets. There was one. There was one that one he, he caught in the middle of the field. He did catch it. Got it stripped out. It was out. stripped out. It was declared an incomplete pass. The other seven targets were not catchable. Two of them were tipped at the line of scrimmage. Two of them were, you know, the shape of a banana. They oh, were, yeah. It was kind of yeah. like that up into the sky and then down into the opponent's hands. It was, it was tough. It was really tough to watch. I don't know what you would do if you are a coach. You, you're entrusted with a franchise. And the quarterback that you have is that bad of a decision maker or executor, whatever, that bad of a quarterback. And you don't have another option. Like Mason Rudolph isn't fixing it. You know, no, it's like not. at least at least for Carolina, Andy Dalton was behind there. It's like that's a competent quarterback. That's like a legitimate average NFL starter. And you, when you don't have one of those guys at quarterback, you just have to like, I, do you? Do you go to the game plan and say, we're going to run 78% of the time? Probably. And that's what you could do better with Mason Rudolph is just run. I mean, this was not – I wasn't the only one that bet on him. Brian Callahan and the Titans bet on him. And yeah. he doesn't seem to have it together. It's it's very tough to watch. I think the way I put it in the tweet was if you accidentally drink something poisonous, if you, you, know, you misread your prescription bottle and you take – like an extra one and you shouldn't have mm. watch this video it will clear your stomach i think my son watched that video this week oh while yeah we were you off. were you were out of the out of the state and uh supposed to be enjoying a uh -huh. trip to a theme park yeah yeah and, and we did we did for so a what lot was of the but your son your son ended up with food poisoning a bad pork chop is that and what it was we believe we believe it was a bad pork chop i was chop. gonna ask you it wasn't a churro right oh those there's no such thing as a bad churro Nothing organic in there to poison you with. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You had reactions to the weekend. We gathered a few of them together in the most sophisticated form possible. Jason and I will help you reflect with Monday Punday. And uh, none better than Chris Godson. Yes, he has been. How about Josh Touchdowns? And Terry McScorin. He sure is. Jordan Lovely. He really was. Uh, we have... Super DeMario. You should have played him. I know. Romeo Dubs got back out of the doghouse. I really wish you had this one, but Drake, yay! <laughs> and Ty won Tracy yep. Jr. Yeah, he got it done. We had some bad performances too, like James Con Artist. And Saquon Barely. Mm, and Travis E.T. ended my week. And Calvin Diddley. Yeah, and DJ Bohr. Jackson Smith and then Jig Bad. <laughs> I like that one. So stupid. Uh, we got Kyler Worried. And Yak Prescott. And Zach Lost. Hmm. Well, hopefully, <sighs> uh, hopefully the week went well for you, the listener. And um, 
It was, it was okay for me. I know you had a a, a worse week, but uh, I escaped well, I mean, look, mostly. I, we all remember bad beats, but we don't remember bad wins, and I'm going to try to remember. I got two bad wins this week. Oh, you got one of the stankiest wins, not just because like sometimes you get a bad win because you don't score a lot of points. Which I didn't. And your opponent scores fewer points, which he did score fewer yeah, points. Yeah. But the way that it happened for you in our league of record, is it's just unfair. It's like the dream. It's like if you have a team that plays really bad, you're like, oh, the only way I'm winning this week is if Olave goes out on the first play with a fumble, and then like Jerome Ford doesn't play, and then like Metcalf doesn't score. Right, Metcalf, you know, has and Friar Muth gets a touchdown call back. It and all those things happen. And yeah, I win by three <laughs> because of all of that. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna try to remember the bad wins, and we're ready to roll. Welcome to Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan. <laughs> oh, Andy forgot how to drink and just spilled all over himself. Good job. Well, we're ready to roll this week. And what we're going to focus on um, at this point, heading into week seven, is the touchdown underachievers. These are guys that are usually good targets. They're a little bit undervalued. Uh, and, and they, you know... The reason that we have averages of like how many targets per touchdown, how many yards per touchdowns, is because those things happen. If you get a bunch of yards, eventually you're going to get a touchdown. If you get a bunch of opportunities, eventually you're going to get one. And some of these players, it's just not been bouncing their way. So here are some positive regression candidates for touchdown scoring. Right now, at the running back position, we got three guys for you Josh Jacobs, six games, one rushing touchdown he has 20.3 opportunities per game he's uh 11 fantasy points per game and he's just not scoring touchdowns even though Packers look great yeah and Josh Jacobs looks good too it's definitely one of the ones that should return to the mean yeah so that that's just someone you want to bet on right now I I think that you've had a couple of very unique opportunities where touchdowns have kind of been almost vultured from him so Josh Jacobs managers, they're probably not too happy right now. I think you could buy low on Josh Jacobs and that would uh that would be wise. I, I I don't see all of the touchdowns going to Jordan Love through the passing game. Najee Harris, one rushing touchdown, which was this week. He finally got it done, but he's getting nineteen point two opportunities per game. Um That's one where I probably am not pulling the trigger because of Jalen Warren's return and the fact that I don't although he's been a touchdown guy. Yeah, not, so not maybe, maybe that's a good one. I think not, and he looked Najee looked really good this week. He had a couple uh angry runs. Yeah. And he, he had were one impressive. he had one where it was like a cut and juke, which is not usually Oh, he jukes? Yeah, it was it was crazy. I was like, "Who are you? Is that Are you Are is you that Barry Al Sanders? Is that Alabama Najee? <laughs> Man, I love Najee at Alabama. Um and then Jonathan Taylor, only four games played, obviously injured, but he only has one rushing touchdown and he's over 20 opportunities um per game that he's been playing in so focus on him when he comes back at wide receiver a couple of the um underperforming guys you got cd lamb and you're like he's been great cd lamb's been awesome so far this year he he, he looks you know dominant most weeks but only two touchdowns that and team was hard to watch this week the cowboys they broken look wrong yeah they did they have no defense really they they're bad 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 Bad, 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 bad. And they don't have any running game, and everybody knows it. It's like Jerry thinks they don't know that, but they do, they're they one-dimensional. And Tom Brady said this so much on the show yesterday or on the broadcast where, like, early in the game they were trying to run the ball, mm -hmm. mind you, for like a yard. And he's like, why are you doing this? Like, you need to throw the ball more now before they force you to be one-dimensional because of the of being down. Yeah, and, and hopefully they – end up doing that like they did last year last year they spent the first couple weeks of the season I think about the first five or six weeks oh, pretending pretending like they could run the ball that's true and failing and then they just abandoned it and said all right let's just pass the ball uh but CD Lamb he's been very very involved I will say this you know the the, the Rico Dattle stuff the high-powered Cowboys offense it feels like we're waiting for it to become a high-powered Cowboys offense. It, it they're not like a top 10 offense right now they don't. That's not how it feels watching these games. Well, but, yeah, and and at this point last year, 
before this past weekend, CD was the wide receiver 20 last year at this point. Before that. Before he became the wide receiver one the in best. dominant yeah. fashion. Yeah. Um, a couple of Seahawks receivers, which really, maybe this is more of a Geno Smith take, but DK Metcalf, six games, only two touchdowns on nine targets per game. And I don't know if you realize this, JSN is averaging over eight targets a game, 8.2. That's 16th in the NFL. I mean, Geno's slinging it. He's 48, 41.8 pass attempts per game. 48? 41.8. Oh, 41.8. I did start to say 48, so you gotcha. heard it. Gotcha, yeah. But I, I, I did correct myself. But only six passing touchdowns, and it's really not fair. In the sense, like well, there Metcalf were two. Is a super target right now. I still think. Yeah, I, I do too. He looks great. He had a touchdown where his the tippy tippy toe was out of bounds. Um, that's on him. But I mean, he just. Well, Mike said he's wearing the wrong uh, cleat color. He needs yeah, to be better. wearing white. Absolutely. If I'm a wide receiver, yeah, I'm white because you can't tell when. I'm, I mean, I think they give him that touchdown if he's got white I cleats. I paint my shoes with the the same paint that they use on the field. You're darn right, you do. The morning of. You get it from the groundskeeper. That's right. That's right. Um, or just the tip of my toe. Just the tip. Just the <laughs> just, outside edge. Just the very tip of the toe is white, and the and the shoe is you, black. You've got black shoes, and you just white edge. That's genius. All um, right. And then, but JSN as well. But DK Metcalf also, in addition to that tippy toe touchdown, if you didn't watch the game, he had a bomb touchdown. That was called back by another one of these illegal formations. Which I'm, now you're diametrically opposed to as well. I'm just so... Or like, you just... They just bother you. They, they bother you and Mike. They bother me What if me they just Mike. had the right... What if they did a legal formation, though? Well, so here's the thing. I get the argument that these are professionals and they should just line up in the correct formation, right? I Like, okay, yeah, sure. No, that's true. But all I actually care about is good football. I want to see fun football. And when these formations have no bearing on the play. And it's just like, he didn't get that touchdown because a guy was an inch over, you know, like this. It it didn't change anything. And so you're ruining football by calling this crap. Mm, mm, okay. That's my opinion. Okay. And Zay Flowers, and right. and one touchdown? Yep, Zay Flowers, eight targets per game, only one touchdown. I think his will be coming. And then at tight end, I think, dude, Trey McBride, his touchdowns have to be coming. They have to be coming. He's... 7.6 targets per game. That's second. And he's great. 9.4 points per game. He's been, I don't know, one of the definitely a top three tight end as far as just consistency, target volume, receptions. But the eight targets this past week. Yep. Eight catches this past week. You know how many touchdowns he has on the season? Zero. Zero. No, Nada. that's not true. Oh, that's right. He recovered a touchdown in the end he zone. He recovered a fumbled touch. Uh, yeah, a fumble that's right. for a touchdown. He has not caught a touchdown this season or rushed for one. Um, they lost Harrison early in that game too, and McBride took advantage of it. So that's you're, a good one. You're going to expect um that Harrison will probably miss this next week. So McBride should be full go. Jake Ferguson. He uh, was such a disappointment this past week. Three catches for 11 yards in a game where they were trailing and just couldn't get it going. Yeah, you, you would expect more. His red zone utilization is usually great. Um, the CD and and uh, Fergalicious, I would say, are good targets, but they're going to bye week. Then they come out and they play San Francisco. Hopefully they get some of their defensive unit back after this bye because it's hard to watch them right now. All right, that was Ready to Roll, presented by Nissan and the all-new reimagined Nissan Kicks. Take on the city with the Nissan Kicks' bold new look, plus safety features like the Nissan Safety Shield 360 technologies that will have your back in traffic. Head over to NissanUSA.com to learn more. Nissan Safety Shield technologies can't prevent all collisions or warn in all situations. See the owner's manual for important safety information. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. Well, before the week began, David Montgomery signed a two-year, $18.25 million contract extension and then proceeded to ignore every arm and leg tackle possible on his way to another gigantic football game. I love watching him play, and I love watching Gibbs play, but I don't want them together. <laughs> like, you know, and they're, they're stuck together for a long time now. Yeah. Like, this, was, this contract move was basically, this tandem is going to keep working for us. Does it affect your 
Gibbs dynasty value? Do you look a at a little Gibbs? bit? Yeah, a little bit because you would hope that there'd be a graduation. Uh huh. The second half of last year, there was a graduation to Gibbs. Uh, Montgomery was hurt during the year. Gibbs early in the year. They both they do work really well together. It's tough as a fantasy player because you know there there's a bit of a an equation here, Jason, where the the Lions can score forty five fifty points. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like you've got the main running back on two 25-point teams sometimes. And, you know, yesterday was not Gibbs' day. There were a lot of Monday Pundays about Montgomery stealing away, you know, the opportunities for Gibbs. They go that super big, we've got more linemen than you package on the goal line. Um, you know, Gibbs had 15-yard run after 15-yard run yesterday. He just didn't, he get looked into, great. didn't get into the end zone. And he so. still had double-digit fantasy points. You know, it's not one of those really bad performances. It's just you have a higher expectation, especially when the team is scoring 40-plus points. Yeah, he's not finished once outside that top 20, Gibbs, ever. No, he's, he's been very 5. consistent. 2. Here's his yards per, per carry. 6.5, 5.2, 5.6, 5.2 the last four games. Yeah, and, and Montgomery has been Unbelievable. even better. Unbelievable. So, but isn't it fun watching Montgomery? The, the, well, yeah, you want somebody that's going to like. It's similar to James Conner, where guys just they're he they're just stronger than the defensive guys. They're just stronger. They work out more or something. Take they, better protein. They have missed. Uh, they've got a bye week, and Montgomery's the RB seven right now, and that's pretty impressive. Gibbs RB fifteen. So yeah, long term, this is not a Gibbs takeover. Both guys have the added benefit of if one of them gets hurt the other one's probably the number one running back in football right i mean michael Pittman. um <laughs> wait this uh, is this was, wild he's going on ir wait oh hold up no he's totally fine and awesome play him uh, was... except he said now injured reserve is still not off the table what but as long as he feels he can win rounds i'll be out there what, what? does he know the Injury reserve is four weeks. Like, I, I can you imagine having an injury where you're just like, this is either not an injury or a four week injury at any moment. Right. I'm still deciding if I can win routes. <laughs> if I can win routes, like I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be out there. But otherwise, four. I'm missing four. Wait a minute. Is this, dude? Is this an Anthony Richardson thing? <laughs> it's just like, well, wait, let's let me see. Wait, he can't win routes if Richardson's back, so he goes down to IR. Yeah, he's uh, like, oh man, uh, the the surprising you... pull of Anthony Richardson, and then and then Pittman active for Joe Flacco, and he's out there come, winning come routes. Come on, this is the opposite of the Breakfast Club. Yeah, this is like, hey, if he's starting, put me on IR. I mean, Joe Flacco is two and one, and put up thirty four points in the loss. He's playing good. Uh, Travis Etienne, week to week, he's been playing through a shoulder injury. This was a hamstring. Goddard hamstring. Tajay Spears hamstring. Jerome Ford hamstring. Jerome Ford is the most like consequential in the sense that he could kind of be expiring. They use Devonta Foreman a lot. And Nick Chubb's supposed to come back next week. Yeah, this is actually um... – it's going to be very, very interesting to see what Nick Chubb can do considering the J Jerome Ford injury. With him out of the way, now all of a sudden it's not like a – Yeah, you need him bad. Yeah, it's not an ease him back in. This is a team that needs victories, needs Chubb in order to get the victories, and now doesn't have the luxury of easing him in with a, a full you, depth chart. Did you hear, though, that they're considering starting Chubb at quarterback? Oh, that would be such an upgrade. That would be – but don't hear what I'm not saying. That would be such an upgrade if he is a pocket passer. If they take Nick Chubb and they don't let him run the ball, that's an upgrade at quarterback. Seems that way. Because Deshaun Watson should not be the quarterback. They should trade Watson for Levis. You know, straight up. See how it works in the you, other. You know what was weird? He, Deshaun Watson was actually good. He was good in the second half. In the second half of the game. He, he, lo he, he was good. He 11 was like, for 11 to start the second half. How can you do that sometimes? And then be so outlandishly inaccurate other times. Yeah. Maybe you're uh, a bipolar quarterback. Yeah, I think he's been eating banana peels. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., Chris Olave, concussions ruled out pretty quickly. And Olave, yeah. I was worried right from the jump. I Before they even ruled him out, I was like, okay, hitting the head. And he's had, That's this his is now third. his third, yeah. Third documented concussion. I mean, he's not playing this week. No, no. Well, they're Thursday night, so there's yeah. no chance. If you've got Chris Olave, move on. 
Um, I'm I I've got him everywhere, unfortunately, and I don't move on like drop him. I'm just saying prepare this week for someone else. I'm hoping he's back the following week. That's like that is my rose colored glasses. He at played ninety four percent of snaps the week before and scored two points. He played three percent of snaps this past week and scored negative one points. One not, not one, helpful. Yeah, that's disappointing. Dontavian Wicks left with the shoulder injury, didn't return. That, so his drops per game went down. That's true. Uh, the drop of fab on him has become worse and worse. Because yep. I, I was still in this week. I mean, you, you, I still put together the DraftKings lineup. He was in it. No, uh, I was I was out. Yeah, I, I didn't listen to an episode while I was gone. Sorry. Um well, on Sunday Live, you know, with Watson being activated, with Dobbs being back, mm -hmm. with Jaden Reed being the the alpha, I just was like, you're you're playing with fire because the the catch percentage on Wicks was already terrible. So, yeah. you know, if you're catching half the balls thrown in your direction, my point is the seven targets from the week prior might have had people starting them. You know, what I mean, the, like people were like, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go after it again, gotcha. and then they and then they get back to back, just slaps across the face. Yeah. James Cook, questionable for tonight's football game. I think he's going to be in there, but you need an emergency plan, hopefully. I mean, it's probably too late for you to get that, but Ty Johnson, Ray Davis would be the emergency plan. Um, or if you have him in your flex, which you should have him in your flex, mm -hmm. the emergency plan becomes Matt Collins or, you know, Curtis Samuel or, by golly, Dawson Knox if you had to. Players that will be out on yep. the waiver wire. Xavier Gibson. Um, Khalil Shakir questionable. We'll see if he's back. They need him and Tyler Conklin questionable. Hopefully you had a different option. Although he was very good last week. Conklin. Conk yes. Conk. Conk Conk. Uh, that was today's, uh, we, we came up with a new ABC. Always be Conkin. Always be Conkin. Always be Conkin. Conk Conk baby. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. We'll take a break and come back with the studs and duds. Now, I have it on good authority that Al Borland, our very own uh, producer over there, executive producer, he just told me he would like Cook to be a surprise inactive. Now, that seems oh. biased. That seems like someone playing against Cook. Is that accurate? That is accurate. I have a 12-point lead, and I'm playing against Cook and the Jets' defense. So if Cook was out, that'd be great. Um, he, if, if, if Cook does what this week has done, he'll probably be active and then leave shortly. After the game starts. So also that something that Al would be totally fine with. Yeah, I don't want him to get hurt, but mm -hmm. maybe maybe a little sniff will keep him out of the game. Oh, or something. Good, yeah, good, get the cold. Get, get the cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, studs, we talked about it. Caleb Williams, who was Mike, Mike's start of the week, 226-4, and four, had a fifth touchdown called back. It was to DJ Moore. Would have fixed DJ Moore's whole week. But DJ Moore's uh, arm went down. I don't know if you heard it on the broadcast. Kurt Warner had DJ Moore in his fantasy league. Oh, really? And was calling that game and was like, <laughs> dang it. But his arm went down and it ended up with a DeAndre Swift touchdown. He's been outstanding. They go into the bye. They get Washington, Arizona coming out. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. If Honestly, it, he's a good trade target maybe. Trade four, you're saying? Well. It's hard to trade for someone off, it's just off on of the, the number one. It's on the bye week, though. Somebody else is starting for but, that team this I, week. I will say this. Caleb Williams is still on a good amount of waivers. And he might not be picked up because of the buy. He might be dropped because of the buy, even after a good performance. So he's someone that just needs to be glanced at at your waiver wire. And while, and while you say that, let me mention another start of the week, Cole Komet, because he's on a waiver wire in our league of record. So he didn't get picked up and played. He was great, two touchdowns, and he goes into the buy. So people might not pick him up this week because you don't, you can't play him. Yeah, he'd be a good stash at tight end. Well, yeah, if you lost. Dallas Goddard, well, I guess you're going to need someone to play this week. So, You know how I would have scored a lot more points in my dynasty league, Jason, if I played the best quarterback in the history of the universe instead of Kyler Murray? That would be Baker Mayfield. Who? Sorry. Yeah. Laser, Laser Mayfield, which I think has only like imbued him with more power. It really, Ever since I, we've named – I think we did this. I think, I think this think is we, us. I think we healed Laser Mayfield. Um, 24 for 36, 325, and 4. And and three three picks, but they were awesome. I mean, it, the picks or the no the okay. the the Bucks. Um, they they're they're, they're playing some so really good. good football. Um, I will I will happily happily say I I was wrong. I thought that they were going to be more of a mirage team from last year squeaking into the playoffs. 
they look like one of the you know one of the better teams out there right now. Obviously, their record is that way, but it's not just their record. Is it it's, the 530 yards on offense? Did that help? Yeah, it's 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 both sides of the ball. I think they're they're playing well, but Baker specifically looks legitimate. Now they're playing against Baltimore this week, and Baltimore is a good defense, but their offense is great. They're going to score, and you can't run on them. So we have seen, even though they're a good passing defense for fantasy purposes, by the end of the game, you're probably going to have a lot of fantasy points here. They're using Godwin so well. He was incredible. Baker is the number one. Uh, is number one in the NFL in in touchdown passes, and the Bucks are number one in points. Wow! So I mean, you, you, if you want Todd Bowl, like Todd Bowles is a defensive coach, so like get your defense going, and this team can go go places. Baker Mayfield is the quarterback two on the season right now. I mean, it's not like he's been occasionally good. He's good every week. Like he's legitimately like I'm, I have to start Baker Mayfield over Kyler right now. You get to start I Baker get to. Mayfield. Sorry, I'm sorry. Who? Sorry. Laser. Jordan Love, 22 for 32, 258 and four. Cardinals defense was inept. And Jordan uh, Love. I don't think you can qualify that to defense. I think the Cardinals were inept. When you say Cardinals defense, that implies that other parts of their team weren't inept. I guess their offense also helped Jordan Love with short fields. Yes. You're right. Jared Goff, 315 and three. He's been cooking. Brock he could, Purdy. He could, do, he could do anything. Anything he wants. It just looks like. That well, offense is a That offense just looks like they could, they just get to pick. Like, they go to the sideline, and they huddle up, and they go, all right, all right. Who wants the touchdown? Who wants the touchdown this time? Yeah. All right, Tim Patrick, you're going to get it. And then he, you know, he almost got it, and it got called, you know, short. And so, yeah. But they could do anything they want right now. It does. Good call on the – that was your Super Bowl winner, right? Yes. Yeah, because you knew. You knew for sure that well, the we'll Lions see. were going to win. We'll see. I thought Looking I – Looking pretty good. You know. Brock Purdy, 255-3. and three. Justin Fields got it down with two rushing touchdowns. Jalen Hurts looked good with his – combo of wide receivers it's back nice on the, to on the have team them. as a Jalen Hurts manager in a lot of places it is nice to have his wide receivers and uh AJ Brown just makes catches that are that yeah. are they're one of one and I'm gonna be honest while he has his wide receivers it was nice to not have Dallas Goddard because those are those are hollow passes he should just focus on the two main guys <laughs> Jaden Daniels still getting it done 269 and two He's one of my top non-Calvin Ridley my guys. <laughs> he's, he's been a revelation. Only 22 rushing yards, still a great game. Bone, and it was against Baltimore, so it was, it was quite the challenge. They were in it for a lot of the game. Bo Nix, Drake May, the rookies, getting it done. What do you think about Drake May, prescriptive-wise? Is it, Was it a performance that makes you think? This is why I had Demario Douglas in my DraftKings lineup until five minutes before reading it on air. Is because Drake May, I was just like, you know, Mike's hungry for more is Jalen Polk. And to me, Demario Douglas was the more friendly to the quarterback option. I think Drake May is going to have the opportunity to sling it. That is something that we didn't get with Jacoby Brissett, nor was he capable of. The defense is fine. They're going to be losing a lot of games. They're going across the pond. They're playing against this imploding Jaguars team. Who just gave up a million. He had 38 rushing yards. Is Drake May someone that you think legitimately you could stream this week yeah was I that a know. yeah <laughs> um that was a yeah i'm thinking and uh yeah if you're desperate i guess okay um man sean tucker and bucky irving i went back and watched they every ran sean, wild yep yeah, both of them 14 carries sean tucker 136 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown also 56 receiving yards and a receiving touchdown. I went back and I watched. The The majority of Sean Tucker's work did come four minutes left in the game. Uh, his rushing baseline was four minutes left in the game. He had that whole drive, which was almost all him because they're running the clock out. He looked great. Every time he ran to the left side, uh, they had big holes. I think he will be involved um, going forward. It's just Rashad White dependent. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If Rashad White is not active. It will be Tucker involved, but early in that game, it was it was more Irving than than Tucker. And Baltimore is a very tough run defense, so we'll talk about him you, in waivers. You're tomorrow. saying maybe not fight for him. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Joe Mixon, welcome back, oh, friend. So nice to have you back. Yeah, yeah. He's I'm so really, really good. I'm so thankful for you, Joe. And uh, you were outstanding. Damian Pierce had a long touchdown run in this game too. 
Mixon could have scored more. He had another carry on the one. He didn't get in. He scored twice, one through the air, one on the ground, had a 60-yard run. Scoring twice. I they mean, call that a Derrick Henry. Yeah, I mean, Mixon, Mixon, I've been waiting for him to come back so much. I know. You're league of record I was playing team. Cam Akers and just – Joe Mixon saved me this week. Yeah, Joe Mixon was great. And and uh, I think he really actually helps the passing game for the Texans. I mean, the, the Texans are a better offense with Joe Mixon. That's not – Rocket science. Yeah, he's just versatile. Yeah, he's he's very helpful. Derrick Henry's all right. <laughs> in his wins, l listen to his stat lines in Baltimore wins. 25 for 151 and 2, 24 for 199 and 1, 15 for 92 and 1, 24 for 132 and 2. So if you look and you say, hey, I think the Baltimore Ravens win this game, which most games most games are going to. Derrick Henry's going to forget. What was that? Derrick Henry's going to be very good. Very good. Bijan Robinson, two touchdowns. Also yanked from my lineup moments before our podcast. For real? Yeah, because I was worried about the report. I actually put in Tyler Algier, so it was fine because mm. Algier was incredible. 18 for 105 and 1. But Bijan scored twice, looked good, but the hamstring worried me. I didn't want to get stuck with a hamstring injury, but he was, he was fine. Um, David Montgomery. 12 for 80 and two Swift was great for the third straight game. Tyrone Tracy, 17 for 50 and one or more impressively six for 57 through the air. That's that was the, the, during the draft season, it's the receiving work that excited you with Tyrone Tracy because they need a receiver. And this was a converted wide receiver to running back. So you knew he has the ability in the receiving game, but 82% and 85% of the running back rush share over the last two weeks without Singletary plus an 11.5% target share. Like, the utilization is great. Singletary's just retire. <laughs> just just retire. Man, the, Keep the, your body healthy and walk away. I really think the Giants are like three plays this season from being a surprise team. They are a good team. With good defense. Their, their defense is very good, and their offense is, I think, well coached. How did they not win yesterday if they have Malik Neighbors? Yeah, I mean, Daniel Jones is still a liability. I know he's been not the worst. He's not going out there and Will Levising, but he's also not that good. He's just not that good. Rank that division right now, top to bottom. What's the best team? Eagles. Second best team? Commanders. Then Cowboys. Then Cowboys, then Giants, yeah. Okay. Talked about Najee already. J.K. Dobbins, 25 for 96 and 1. They looked very good against Denver, jumped all over them early. At wide receiver, the, the player of the day was Chris Godwin, 11 for 125 and two on 13 targets. Had one of those Jamar Chase-style touchdowns that he just bounced off a defender, slipped through them, and then went for many, many yards. You love to see the rapport with Baker in those those slot screens where it's just kind of automatic, even if he's got a a backpack of a defender on Baker just puts it right out of his reach. I mean, 11 of 13 laser, uh, 11 of 13. That's it's not, it's not going to go away. Let me, let me test something. Laser. Yep, you always say laser. If I hit that button, don't it, you? That, that wasn't me. That's part of the drop. Laser. No, no, it's not part of the drop. I don't know. I heard it again. Godwin's been great. AJ Brown, six for one, 16 and one. Welcome back. Terry McLaurin. He's been awesome. He has been really good after those first two weeks of, of just putrid uh, yep. where he had 17 yards and 22 yards. This is where you can't react too quickly. I mean, like, first two weeks, I mean, six six for uh, six catches in week two, but it was only for 22 yards and you freak out, and then he's just been, he's been outstanding. His air yards are out of control. He's scoring. It's awesome. Carolina this week, so wheels up. Debo. Got it done on Thursday Night Football. Gabe Davis. <laughs> yeah, Gabe, Gabe Davis. I don't want to talk about Gabe Davis because no. he dropped the touchdown. Yeah, but he, he could have had he three. Had, he had two touchdowns, so he's oh. in the studs of the week that nobody played. Keenan Allen, two touchdowns. Do you care about Keenan right now? Um, n Not a ton. I mean, obviously, they're going into their bye week. After that, they've got a good schedule. We talked about that with Caleb Williams. Um, You know, that's that's – it's great, but, I mean, if he had 41 yards. It's just one of those, which was his season high. Yeah. 
So I, be careful. I don't know how much you can rely on him or not. That I don't want to chase two touchdowns when over the course of the season so far he has not done hardly anything. I still think DJ Moore is the guy that I for want. Sure. You for know. sure. Dobbs, two touchdowns. It's nice to see. Demario Douglas got in the end zone six for 92 with Drake May and should be talked about tomorrow on the waiver wire show knowing that they might throw for more than 50 yards. Uh, Zay Flowers, Deontay Johnson also had big weeks. Cole Komet at tight end was the start of the week. Five for 70 and two. They have moved on from Gerald Everett and Komet has been an every week viable option. In fact, it'd be hard for me to flex Keenan over Komet. I mean, like if it was a flex spot, I'd probably play Komet. If you had to tell me who's more likely to get a touchdown, I would definitely think Komet. George Kittle continues his uh, assault on the tight end position. Number one. is he? Yeah, he's the number one tight end. He right? is. Okay. He is. That makes sense because he's been great every week. What did you make of Mr. Four Target? Three for 66 and a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Mark Andrews. He had the same amount of targets as Isaiah Likely in this game, four of them each, and he actually scored. He touched the painted uh, mm -hmm. area. He calls it the painted spot. The painted spot. And um, he got there. Yeah, I mean, I, I know it's been not fun to say, and I've been saying it, which is he's – He's not bad, and this offense is going to still throw the ball, and they don't need him as much anymore. He's not the clear and utter number one target that's taking you know twenty five percent target share. Let me ask you a difficult question. No. All right. Uh, all right. I'll, Let's uh, wrap it up. David Njoku or Mark Andrews, you have to lock one into your tight end spot and never take them out. Rest of season. I would. Man, that's tough. Uh, Consistency-wise, it's going to be Najoku because you just expect more targets. But how many touchdowns is Deshaun Watson going to throw? I think I think I'm going to stick with Andrews. I, I I know it was a horrific back-to-back -back week of goose goose, but he has been great for a career. He's not old for a tight end. He's on a great offense. There might be more target competition with Likely, but I I. You know, I'm not going to completely abandon ship on Mark Andrews. Like I, you know, people were dropping him like crazy, and I, you know, I was saying I, I just don't. In this economy, in this tight end economy, Mark Andrews can do what a lot of other people can't do. Trey McBride eight for ninety six. Evan Ingram came back to ten oh receptions. Oh my goodness! Just right off the bat, his his hammy's fine. Ten for ten each, a hundred yards and a fumble. That's about the normal Ingram. Yeah. A lot of targets, about 10 yards per each of them. Laporta, one, <laughs> one target. Great, one great target. One catch. He, he's in the studs category. 52 and a touchdown. Now, Laporta, with the ascension of Jamison Williams, has really not been heavily targeted. Do you well, know what his target pace is? You add in Tim Patrick, who – Tim Patrick's a good receiver. You talking like, about Fireball Jones? Fireball Jones. Yeah. Um, he's a good wide receiver, and he fits this offense because he's a strong blocker. So he's going to be out there. I, I I have no idea what his target pace would be. I, I would guess. What do you know how many targets he had last year? Um, Last year, probably around 90. 120. 120. Ouch. <laughs> um, I don't know. what What's he on pace for this year? 51. Holy moly. I was going to guess low was 70. 51. Yeah, I mean, that you know. This is uh this is not a lack of talent. No, it's very This it's is a Mark Andrews. Remember the conversation there? Of yeah, like Yep. They've got target competition now. Too many good players. Yeah, they don't need him. That doesn't make Sam Laporta bad. Ho hum Brock Bowers, ten targets, nine for seventy one, and no touchdowns. He's the best. Brock Bowers has a really good chance to finish this year as the number one tight end. Like a really good chance. Super good. It, without touchdowns. Without, well, he doesn't need him. He could finish number one. If he finishes number one, that will be two consecutive years that a rookie tight end is number one overall. The truth is it will be actually very, very difficult for him to finish number one without touchdowns. Those have to come. He only has one on the season. We saw this with the 1,000-yard season from Kyle Pitts, his rookie year, where he looked really, really good, but he only had, I think, two touchdowns over the course of the season. That being said, the floor is very high for him. He's so important to this offense. I mean, 12 targets last week, 10 targets this week. Obviously, that'll go down when Devontae Adams comes back, but Devontae Adams might not ever come back. George Kittle is eight points ahead of him on the season. So he's the tight end, too, and you know that McCaffrey shall return. So I would bet on Bowers. 
and just hope he scores sometimes. I will say that they're, you know, if you're like, what tight end? You can just get to pick them. I know you guys did a a, a redraft. redraft. I yeah, did a draft redo. Did uh, any tight ends go in those first couple rounds? Probably not. I believe Bowers went. Was he the number one tight end drafted? Yes. Interesting. I think he went around nineteen or something like that. In our, we took twenty four repicks. I think I would probably go Kelsey one. Did you listen to that? No. Do I you know who yet. went number one? I do not. Who do you think? Mike had the number one pick. Mike Rico Dowdle. <laughs> <laughs> is my guess was. Did I get it? Uh no no surprisingly not um I think Derrick Henry you see I uh he did not um it, he took Jamar Chase oh really yeah. Jamar Chase yeah he took Jamar Chase um I think Henry went four interesting I'm looking I'll, at I'll three dudes go. that don't know I'm talking yeah, to them just, just glossy I'll eyes no don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> let's get into the duds uh after we take a quick break. Got any intel the, over there those, those after that long break? Those deucers seem like the kids in <laughs> class that weren't paying attention, and then the teacher goes to the class, and the, and they're just praying in their head, please don't call on me. It wasn't please me. Please don't call on me. It wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. They, they were all just staring Are you ahead. guys, like, doing a LAN party? Like, you playing WoW over there on those computers? <laughs> no, uh, sir. Where did Henry go? Now, I don't you know. You told me not to look it up. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, speaking of the deucers. Pooped in his big boy pants. Professional segue. All right. Uh, no one disappointed fantasy managers more this week than Dak Prescott. I know this because I read every Monday pun day and I read every reply to my Calvin Ridley tweet. And then somehow every reply to the Calvin Ridley tweet was about Dak ruining the week. He did not throw for 200 yards. Um, against a Detroit team where you usually can throw on them at home, at home. I mean, they were no they touchdowns, were shell shocked, and two picks. And they really, I mean, you said it earlier. The the Cowboys look broken. So thank goodness there's a bye week right now. I think they're going to regroup. I mean, this is a then they go to San Francisco. They go to San Francisco. That's not an easy game, but I I don't think we're going to see this version of the Cowboys coming out of the bye. I think they're going to get some players back on defense, and figure some stuff out on offense. They just have to, and they've got the personnel to do it. All right, Kyler Murray was awful, but he also lost Marvin Harrison, and they got behind the sticks early. He just couldn't get it going. They could not get a first down, and it was pouring rain. Do you care about this going against the Chargers, Miami, and Chicago the next three weeks? Um, I wasn't listening to you. I was looking up the uh, picks. Derrick Henry went eighth. Yeah, in, in retrospect, I would have taken him at two. Okay. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, in retrospect, for sure. After the two touchdowns this yeah, week. Yeah, after he kept it going this yeah. week, uh, he probably belonged there. Saquon had a dud of a week, too. So uh, who are you talking about? Kyler. Oh, Are gosh. you worried about Kyler? I'm petrified about Kyler. I mean, we Monday Punny was Kyler worried? Yeah. And that's the right name. I mean, you have to be worried. You. He has two out of four games that you were happy. Yeah, and the others are shockingly low. Like They're really for, bad. For a guy with the mobility that he has, um, you should have a high floor where it's okay if he doesn't throw for three touchdowns this game because he ran for fifty six yards and that kind of just that's an extra touchdown. He's you know, fourteen so rushing yards this this past week, three two weeks ago. What are you doing, Cardinals? Although I know what they're doing. They're failing. I mean, yeah. they, they they are failing in every aspect. I'm petrified, and now you don't have now, Marvin Harrison. Now, last week they beat San Francisco, and we were all sunshine and rainbows. I don't think it was all sunshine and rainbows. It, it wasn't a. It wasn't like they went in there and and you know. I guess the 49ers kind of. 49ers beat. They themselves. just kind of stink, huh? Yeah. First in the division. All right, we're back. <laughs> Kirk Cousins was really disappointing. This was because Not Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson got the touchdowns. Kirk was Kirk was fine. Led a great victory. He just when they got down to the goal line, they ran it in. James Conner, who has been one of the most consistent running backs in football this year, uh, had a huge dud of a game. Seven for twenty four, barely got work in the fourth. They were blown out. And when the Cardinals get going bad, it hurts everybody through and through. I mean, like it, it, the Kyler. Connor combo of disappointment has happened in conjunction a couple of times. They just 
sometimes don't have this offense going, and then sometimes you're like, oh, nice script. Saquon Barkley against the Cleveland Browns. Very disappointing game. Yeah, very disappointing. He got the work, 18 carries, but only 47 rushing yards, no touchdowns, and very few targets, which was surprising, especially after Dallas Goddard went out so early. Uh, I think you just – it's water off your back. You don't worry about it at all. Former number one redraft pick, Rico Dowdle. Oh, yeah. Five, five yards for, a carry. Five for 25. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it's it's tough for teams to run against Detroit, so oftentimes they abandon it, and they did here. Yeah, and he a lot of his little dump off work was uh coming from the backup quarterback in the end of a forty seven to nine game at that point. Tank Bigsby. This no was, one's saying thanks to Bigsby this week. No, it was it was very, very surprising, upsetting. I've been trying to search for news on Tank Bigsby this morning. I haven't seen anything substantial, but That's it was, where we normally ask the deucers, but Yeah, they're their eyes are still glossy. I don't know that they can hear us right now, Andy. Um, I, you know, this last week in London, you would expect if a hamstring injury takes out, you know, Travis Etienne early in the game, that Tank Bigsby would be the guy. But no, it was Dearness Johnson who played fifty six percent of the snaps. Tank Bigsby, twenty seven, only twenty seven percent of the snaps. He barely played more than Travis Etienne. So I'm like, did Tank Something get hurt? Must be wrong there i think it's it's hard to find information right now because they're they're in london they're staying there um this week so i, I don't know how much we'll hear but i wish we knew maybe for he can't tomorrow. run on the other side of the road ah that's you know what i mean it. yeah yeah javante williams six for 23 he is who we know he is was, zach moss stunk chase yep. brown had the big touchdown antonio gibson here's your opportunity antonio why don't you take 13 carries and turn it into 19 rushing yards? Ooh. That seems impossible. I want to say I could do that, but I would. I could never do that. I could never get 19. If they gave me 13 times, if they gave me a ball 13 times, I would get probably negative 45 rushing yards. <laughs> That's my guess. I don't know. I wish that there was a way. Can AI give us the ability to just generate a game where Jason's in there. Oh, that would be Can so Can I watch fun. a game where if I, Jason's in there? If I get like six months to work out like crazy and get to my best athletic peak at this age. And all you're going to do is fullback stuff, right? You're just getting hit, you're just running straight into the back of somebody. No, no, no. I'm, I am I want them. Are you trying to juke? I, oh, for sure, brother. They're going to do like tosses to me and I'm going to grab out. I'm going to I'm gonna give these. I'm the big shimmy. You know what I mean? I'm going to oh, give yeah. them a shimmy give shake. And then I'm gonna get laid the leg, out. The legs are moving, but the upper is shaking. I can't. I wonder what we would look like. Like you watch an NFL player and you go, "Oh, he looks so slow." Like Austin Eckler when he was a fullback last year, and you're watching him in open field look oh, yeah. so slow. Yeah. How slow would we look? It we, would be incredible. It would look like we're not moving. Yeah, that's true. Uh, wide receiver duds. Uh, Mike Evans did not participate in the route. Yeah, uh, he got. He actually got banged up, right? Yes, he did get banged up, and he got Chris Godwin. Um, it Don't seems, worry about him. No, I'm not, no, of course not. Mike Evans has been very, very good. No wide receiver is great every single week. Most of the weeks, Evans has been good. Three touchdowns in the last three games, just none. Calvin Ridley, eight targets, zero catches. Yeah, fifty nine percent of the team's air yards, or as Mike calls them, prayer yards. That is the second behind A.J. Brown this week. But that's just nonsense. It's what you talked about. Like you, if you go and watch Andy's tweet um, of, of the eight targets of Calvin Ridley, there's air yards that are attributed to him because you have to give the target to someone. But when the ball lands eight yards away on the ground, it's just headed your direction. That's an irrelevant play. So, it, yeah, I mean. Would you, you, would you cut him <clears throat> I think I would be willing to cut him, and here's why. Because he's going to have big games, and you're never going to know. You there's It's impossible to know when, how, or where. So you have to choose to start him. Now, I will say this. In my situation, I've talked about this. Like, I've been ravaged with injuries. You know, I'm starting guys. And more more off, injuries this week. Off Yes, I'm starting guys off the waivers every single week as, like, spot starts. So if Calvin Ridley were out there, I would absolutely pick him up and play him. Uh, because he has the ability to go out and, you know, catch an 80 yard touchdown he, he, to get 12 targets in a game that are maybe more catchable. So I don't, I don't think he is an unstartable asset. But if your roster is good 
and you have to make a decision between him and someone that has a higher baseline. I'm always going to be making the other decision right now. So I don't know. Maybe you just look to trade him off of his name, package trade him. You know, you, you take Calvin Ridley and another running back, and you trade him for just a slight upgrade at the running back. DJ Moore, the disappointing game. Almost got into the end zone. Roma Dunze did nothing. It was a Cole Komet and Keenan Allen week. Brian Thomas Jr., we saw this coming. You don't throw in Chicago. My original parlay partay. Tell that to Gabe Davis. Right. Um, my original parlay partay was Brian Thomas. It was going to be Brian Thomas under 65 yards. He went three for 27. I ended up just taking the under on Trevor Lawrence, which also barely worked, mm -hmm. thankfully. Um, Christian Kirk a dud as well. Metcalf, we talked about that game already. We also talked about Ayuk. Rashid Shahid was he did score a touchdown in special teams. But otherwise, you know, he was a big part of Sunday Live that I said I would bench Shahid for everybody because he had a, he's got a special rapport with Derek Carr in particular. He got seven targets. He only caught one for 11 yards. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. I, Rattler was interesting with his legs, but he's concerning from a – I got a snake, man. We got a new snake. Oh, of course. He's a rattler. I missed that. Oh, my gosh. Are you the happy? The snake is back. Are you happy, I'm Jason? so happy about that. We got that little present for you. Oh, that's awesome. And it, I mean, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the biggest loser getting us that vi video drop quickly. The CGI is so advanced on this. Look at this. I got a snake, man. Oh, man that's so, so bad. Right, that's probably that a, whole, is, has a night or two. That, yeah, that was, that was a long time. Well, I, uh, Amari Cooper. Six targets, four for 42, and what What are you – I need to know from an unbiased source. I have Amari Cooper in two leagues. Amari Cooper's target numbers tell me he's one of the best. Mm -hmm. Amari Cooper through six weeks is the wide receiver 42 mm -hmm. on 53 targets. Well, he's catching 45% of them. He's on pace for 150 targets, which makes – he puts me – this is like a uh, – like there's just like I can't do it. Like if a guy's on pace for 150 targets, the targets are like my favorite number, and so I can't put those players on my bench. I just like I so talk to me, yeah, counsel no. me, put me on the couch, tell me what I'm supposed to be doing with a player on pace for 150 targets. You're supposed to be starting those players, which you are and you have been, and you're going to continue to do. And what you're really doing is you're just waiting for the. 70th sack of a game to be the final sack for Baltimore <laughs> and then Jameis Winston comes in and I promise you like this is this it is will my, be okay this is Michael Pittman this right. is Josh Downs right if Jameis Winston comes into this game Amari Cooper is going to have a ab absolutely great fantasy production because Cooper looks Can we good wait for, uh, we're waiting for the trade too oh sure yeah uh, we could trade Cooper elsewhere um if he becomes a uh, Chief, that will be great. I mean, Cooper's Cooper is not bad. Deshaun Watson is bad. Let me read you a stat from Field Yates. He put this out there on Twitter. The Browns have now become the first team in 10 years to score under 20 points in each of the first six games of the season. The Cleveland Browns have now scored once in the last how many drives? Take a guess. Drives? One time in the last, you want me to just tell you? Yeah. 29. I was going to guess 30. I wish I didn't have you tell me. <laughs> you want to guess again? 30. Nope, 29. Ah, darn it. So um, they are inept, and uh, Cooper's getting targets. They and they are... keep coming out after every game and saying, answering the immediate question that everyone wants to know, is Deshaun Watson still your starter? And they are adamant, Deshaun Watson is our starting quarterback. Would you rather have Will Levis or Deshaun Watson to, as the quarterback of your team for next week? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Deshaun Watson, he's yeah won games, but I don't want him. if it's my franchise, I wouldn't have Deshaun Watson there. So Nick Chubb, <laughs> yes, Nick Chubb, quarterback. I think I'd put myself in. Would you? I think you have to. Well, I there was a uh, third and two where Amari Cooper was running a drag across the front, uh, right behind the line of scrimmage, and there wasn't a defender within ten yards of him in any direction, and if Watson hits him. Two two yard pass. Mm -hmm. If Watson hits him, he picks up the first down. He probably runs for twenty twenty five yards, and he puts it like somewhere where a, you know, back hip, impossible to catch ball. Did you want to pull your hair out? 
Darnell Mooney, after the big week last week, just five targets, three for 38. It was a disappointing performance in a game where you thought he'd get more targets. Jake Ferguson, we talked about it. A dud, the bye week's coming up. And so you can do what you want there if you think the offense is going to get fixed. If not, go get Cole Komet, although that's going into the bye, but Komet could be a pivot option. David Njoku, pay attention to Njoku. He's large, and he's close to the line of scrimmage, and those are two potential benefits for Deshaun Watson. Tucker Craft, this one let people down. Yeah, I mean, Tucker Craft looked like the, you know, the the fix, the salve for your tight end position after – being the tight we end got two cocky. and the tight we end one. We thought we had some. I, I, I still think you do have something there. I mean, this game, it was seven to nothing, which is a close game. That's a single score game. That's beginning of the game. And while it was seven to nothing, you were in Slack tweeting how how manhandled we were getting as, as the, speaking of the Cardinals. Like, it wasn't what the score said. It was a lopsided affair from snap one when it was zero to zero. Yeah, but you want him to be part of the lopsided. But you can't always be. So, like, like for instance, Mooney, you know, or, or Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins had a down game, but he didn't at all. Their offense churned. Not everyone can get a piece of the pie always. When Bijan scores two touchdowns and Tyler Algier scores a touchdown. I, I get that, but we're at the stage with Tucker Craft where we're trying to develop – some sort of confidence level week to week. And so, you know, if you get a down week, it's easy to start thinking, well, you know, they didn't have Dobbs. We're at the they didn't have Watson. We're at the stage with tight ends that you can go, well, I don't have anyone else. So. Okay. Um, Friar Muth, two for 16. Touchdown, touchdown called back. Call back yeah. And that'll do it. All right. Waivers tomorrow, Jason. Waivers, streamers, Mike back in the building. The bear will say goodbye. I almost hit the walrus again. That walrus is the same. We got to get a walrus in here. The same. Uh, the icon looks too similar for me. I'm having trouble. Waivers, streamers, tomorrow, Mike back in the building. We'll talk about it. Get you ready for week seven. Monday night football tonight. Yeah. If you want to root for Al Borland, you know. It's a down game for James Cook. Is that what you need? Yes, All sir. Right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.